shall come to you, O Israel. What does that do to you? Again, he's talking about the future, right? It's going to come. It's coming. What is it? Today is now the 15th, which means we have 10 more days. It's coming. How do you feel? <sighs> I, I'm just blown away by the excitement on your faces. It's just, <laughs> it's just joyous. Yes. It's so happy. I must be in a German Lutheran congregation or something. I just, it's just this, this mindset, this, this thing. And, and I have to really laugh at the humor of God because this morning I was doing some surfing on some channels trying to find something happy. And I went to the History Channel and, and saw about some assassinations. And it talked about the butcher of Prague. And I'm going, there's a good reason why Germans ain't happy. <laughs> this whole mindset, this whole, whole concept of, of how do you find joy? As we look back over history, that's what our Lord is talking to us about today. Of how to really have Joy, not because of what we see, not because of what we hear, but because of what we choose to see and what we choose to hear. We're given a couple examples that have always plagued me to try and understand, and the first one is about this patient farmer. Now, I grew up in Cheney. I didn't grow up with farm mom and dad but I married a farmer's daughter. I worked on a farm. And whenever I hear this oxymoron of patient farmer, it, it, it's always plagued me with this idea of as soon as the harvest is ready and then here comes the hailstorms and, and patient farmer. And so I did a deeper study. And the word that's translated patient really, that's really not the real meaning. The word is really long-spirited. It takes on a different metaphor. It means someone who sees beyond. When you plant the seed, what do you see? <whistles> Harvest. Here comes the hailstorm. It was ready. What do you see? <whistles> beyond. Beyond. When you're in the midst of the storm, what do you see, farmer? Beyond. If what I'm focused on is the storm that I'm in right now, oh, I'm happy. How about you? Doesn't work, does it? No matter how hard we want to make it fit and want to make it be who we are, it, it don't fit. Well, then he talks about the perseverance of Job. <sighs> you haven't heard very many sermons from me if you haven't heard me say I hate the word persevere because it is such a negative concept. What I found really intriguing this week is to go back into the word studies again and realize that it doesn't use the concept of perseverance, really the patience of Job. There's where the word patient really kicks in. Now when you're a patient, how much in control of things are you? That's the meaning of the word patient, right? Everybody else is sticking you, everybody else is doing all this stuff and you're just kind of whatever. But Job does the one thing he can do, and he goes and sits on a heap of ashes, a metaphor for how he's feeling in life. And he says, Lord, I'm yours. Did that take away all the pain? Take away all the suffering? No, there's a pill for that. 
And that's where we begin to turn now as we look to our Lord speaking to our hearts more about what it really means to come to today and understand some things. Recognize Mandela? Now, I don't know if you like him or don't like him, but there's a, an image that is projected not just on the screens, but 27 years in prison for expressing his faith. How would you feel? You're now released from prison. You're given power in your country. What do you do? Vengeance is mine. He didn't speak retribution. He spoke reconciliation. Did he have a right to be angry? Did he have a right to seek vengeance? I think everybody that reads his story would say, yeah. Does he have ears? Do you have eyes? Do you have a mouth? He made a choice of what he was going to do with it. And that is exactly what our Lord is speaking about. John the Baptist, chosen by God, a special gift of God to his mom and dad, given the opportunity now to, to be out in the wilderness proclaiming the message of God. Repent! Change! Look what it got him. He's in prison. He's in jail. Not like we have today with air conditioning and three square meals a day. He's in prison. For what? Doing what God said to do. What's he do about it? Doesn't he look happy in that picture? He's joyous. Anybody got ears? Ready to hear? Did you hear what he did? He sent his disciples to Jesus and he asked a question. He wanted to remove any doubt, any concern, any, 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 anything that was taking away his joy of what it meant to serve the Lord. And as you hear our Lord's answer, what do you see in here? That's our question today. What do you see? What do you hear? Jesus took him back and he said, you know the blind? <laughs> they now see. What do you see? The blind? Or those who can see. The blind? Or those who can see? Are you seeing the problem? Seeing the solution. You see, he took him back to Isaiah and said, you know the Lord's in charge when you see these things happening. So what do you see? Well, the lame. can walk. Four years ago, I could hardly get up these steps. I got a new knee. Right? Can you relate? Yeah. Hip, knee. The leg. Walk. What do you see? What do you hear? Lepers. Those accursed people that are ostracized and kicked out. They're not just cured, they're cleansed. Anybody here ever been sick? Wow. What do you see? What do you hear? Even the deaf are starting to hear. And you know as a result of that, those who are dead in their trespasses and sin are being raised. And the good news is being preached to the poor. Blessed are the poor in spirit, because theirs is the kingdom of God. Do you know that's yours? It, 
goes back to this again. What are we listening to? What are we hearing? What are we, what are we watching? What are we doing? What are we, what are we doing with our lives? Because there is so much that can be bad in this world if we let it consume us. Two weeks before Christmas, Leo looked underneath the Christmas tree. And he couldn't see the Christmas tree because there was a package there that was huge. And it had his name on it. Leo was a teenager. What's that tell you about Leo? His mind. What's in this thing? What's in this thing? Two weeks before he gets to open it, it's huge. It's the biggest package he's ever seen. Christmas finally came. Leo got to open this huge package. What's in it? His uncle had built a desk for him. And there was a little note attached to it that said, Leo, keep growing in the Lord and growing in life. Leo said, you know what? It didn't matter what was in that package. My expectations were so vast that I was going to be disappointed regardless. And yet that was one of the greatest gifts I could have received. You see, when our Lord talks to us about he who has ears, let him hear. Be careful, little children, what you... Be careful, little children, what you... See? Why? Because in our life's journey, there are so many events and things that, that can really wipe us out. Or we can be filled with a joy that surpasses all understanding if we're willing to listen and see. I came across this statement this week and it really just seemed to, to fit so well. God's time is not our time, but His clock keeps perfect time. Are you acceptable with that? Be able to let that really be real? Then let me tell you about Lincoln. Lincoln was 10 years old. And he told his mom and dad beyond any questionable anything that all he wanted for Christmas was a pony. And if he didn't get the pony, he didn't want anything. You ever met Lincoln? He's got a lot of different names. He's not always a teenager. He could be any age. If I don't get my pony, I don't want nothing. Christmas morning came. Family tradition is Christmas morning was when they saw all their packages for the first time and that's when they ran down and they opened them. Christmas morn came and Lincoln and his little sister ran down the steps and there were all these packages underneath the Christmas tree and, and his little sister looked at the first one and had her name on it and she, and she oh man. Lincoln looked and looked and looked. One after another, his sister's name was on him. And she was filled with so much excitement. But not Lincoln. He went over and sat on the couch and cried as he heard his own words. If I don't get a pony, I don't want nothing. His dad came down, looked at Lincoln sitting there, and shrugged his shoulders. Lincoln ran outside, cried. 
While he was outside, he saw a pickup go by with a horse trailer. Ran inside, threw himself on the bed, cried. All the while, he saw his dad watching him. A little bit later, Lincoln came downstairs. There was a man there. He said, I'm sorry. I couldn't find your address. I've got a pony out here for you. Lincoln ran outside, got on the pony. Years later, Lincoln said, you know what? It made me think so much of our father. He knows what's coming. He wants us to be filled with that joy. But we keep getting in the way. Our expectations, our wants, our timelines inexpressible joy through faith alone in Jesus Christ. He who has ears, let him hear. He who has eyes, let him see. Anybody got a mouth? Let's proclaim it to the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen.